Hi everyone, Malcolm Rode here with you once again, your certified and experienced USA Cycling expert level coach and strength and conditioning coach here today to talk about some of the basics of training with power. Today we're going to cover training stress score. What is it? Oh, simply, uh, training stress, stress score is, big parentheses, seconds in time that you are riding, times, normalized power, or watts, so normalized, not average, times, the intensity factor of your ride, close small parentheses, divided by, parentheses, your FTP, or your functional threshold power from your fuel test, times 3,600, which is the total number of seconds in an hour, and small parentheses, and big parentheses, times 100. That's all it is, simple. Simple equation. Dr. Andy Kogan came up with it a number of years ago, and it's fantastic. But really, at its root, training stress score is a way that Dr. Kogan came up with in order to help us understand the volume intensity dynamic for your riding. So how much volume are you doing? How much intensity? Because you can't do high intensity, high volume. You'll get into an overtrained state. And this really allows us to be able to go in and modulate and change your training so that you don't overtrain and you're recovering. What this does is allow us to have an idea as to how long it's going to take you to recover. So when we look at a ride, we're looking, the intensity factor is how close to a one hour time trial was it? You know, 40 kilometer time trial, and any athlete, any rider that's done that can tell you how miserable it is. But a training stress score of 100 is going to be equivalent to having done the same amount of work as a one hour time trial. Now, why is this important? Well, Dr. Kogan developed a method that we're able to look at the training stress score from a ride, any ride, and be able to tell you how much recovery you're going to need. So simply, a ride of 150 TSS or less, you can recover by the next day. A ride of 150 to 300 TSS, you're gonna need, you know, that's, that next day will be a little bit, the second day you'll be able to recover. 300 to 450 TSS, it's gonna take you two to three days, maybe a little bit longer to recover. And 450 plus TSS, it's gonna take you quite a, a few days to recover from that massive effort. So what's nice about this, what's really nice about it, is that because of the FTP in there, the functional threshold power, your training stress score for a ride is gonna be very different than the training stress score for a Tour de France cyclist who's riding a massive, massive, you know, 160, 200K, it has a training stress score of 454. For you, that might be, I don't know, 1500, 1500 TSS because the FTP is very different. So this is what's fantastic about the TSS. is when you're training with a power meter, it really allows you to be able to dive in and understand how much recovery you're going to need. That being said, when you first get a power meter, I've got a number of emails and direct messages on Instagram, uh, don't dive right into doing the field test right away when you first get your power meter. What's important is to take the time to just go ride your bike for two weeks as you normally do and start to understand what do these numbers correlate. You know, what is 200 watts for me? Is that tempo? Is that when I'm huffing and puffing at the, the front of the group or when I'm climbing? Just learn roundabouts. What do these numbers feel like to you in your normal efforts? At the end of two weeks, you can take three or four days of easier riding and then do a proper field test, which can be the field test that I use, which is a two by eight minute uh, functional threshold power, where you're going at a, a scale of uh, one to 10, it would be about a seven with 10 minutes easy in between, or you can do the 20 minute time trial test and find uh, a real great number. The reason I use the two by eight minute field test is because a lot of riders mentally, it's very difficult. Anyhow, what we want to do with our TSS is once we have that functional threshold power, we understand how much recovery we need between our rides. What this, this will allow you guys to do is go through your riding and come back and upload your file to Training Peaks WKO, which is what I use. Uh, there's a number of other platforms. Garmin has their own. Uh, Golden Cheat is another one. Whatever platform you use, uh, Andy Kogan's number, Dr. Kogan's number is now used pretty much uh, across the board because it's such a fantastic way to keep you from overtraining. But looking at that TSS after a ride, you could say, wow, you know, my Sunday ride was 150, but Saturday I did 275 TSS. So I should probably, I'm gonna feel it on Monday or Tuesday. Let's take it easy on Monday, Tuesday, I'm gonna go a little bit less so I can recover. So training stress score really helps you guys delve into your training a little bit more and train more intelligently. 
So that's training stress score. Tell me below, what do you use your training stress score? Is this something you're familiar with? And what is the largest training stress score ride that you had? Or what is the training stress score ride for uh, score that you had for ride that you didn't quite expect and you were very surprised? So leave your comments below, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you have any questions, email me, Brody, B-R-O-D-I-E, at humanvortextraining.com, and also check out the website, humanvortextraining.com. So until next time, remember, train smarter, not harder, and it is all about you and your TSS score and you.